Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So we are starting another session. Um, this is the third day for this week. So tomorrow is the last day for this second week and we are going to have two more weeks and um, the course is done after the four weeks. But now we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday that was the adjectives, but now we are going to talk about uh, adjectives that we can use to make comparison. Uh, yesterday we um, learned some things about this kind of adjectives, but now we are going to learn more things uh, about this kind of adjectives, how to form them, um some examples and also we are going to have some exercises and we are going to have some formula for this kind of adjective but first we need to know what are these kind of adjectives so we are going to start with the objective for today so let me show you the topic that we are going to develop in this moment so we have here the document in which you can find all the information that we are working um, through the week. So you have this for this kind of information. So we have that our topic is adjectives and nouns to express comparison. So we are going to talk about also um, about adjectives and, uh, and also uh, nouns that we can use to uh, talk about comparison. So what is the objective for this session? It says that we need to practice using adjectives and nouns to express comparison in English. In this lesson, practice comparing houses and apartments to express similarities or difference. Additional, um, we are going to learn how to use expressions of quantity like just as, enough, or too much to modify adjectives and nouns. And we have two examples, just as comfortable and too few clauses. Um, first, I want to talk about the adjectives and all of the information that we need to know about the adjectives that uh, we can use to make comparison. And also, uh, we are going to see the differences between uh, the two types of adjectives that we are going to uh, learn today. And then we are going to talk about all the other things. For example, the, compar the comparison or the um, similarities and difference uh, about houses. Yesterday we had the exercise in which you have a few photos uh, that had different kind of houses and you can see um, some different things in those houses. So uh, when we, learns something new about this kind of adjectives, we are going to use those photos to talk about the differences or similarities between those houses. So in this case, we are going to talk about uh, comparison adjectives and we have this image and we have six people in that photo. So we have Tom, Andrew and George. Those are the, um, the people that we are using for the example. And we have the phrase, Tom is taller than George, but Andrew is the tallest in the family. We have the example in there in which we are going to mark some things. We are using the adjective tall that in Spanish is alto. So in that case is talking about the, um, the difference between these people that we are uh, seeing in the photo. So it says that Tom, that is the one with the red suit, that Tom is taller than George. And it is like obvious that he is taller, but Andrew is the tallest in the family. So we have the first one that is comparison. 
we are comparing uh, the um, who is uh, the taller between George and Tom. And then we have the uh, other expression that Andrew is the tallest because no one else is taller than him. So we are going to see those words that we are going to use to talk about this kind of adjectives. But first we are going to make a little review about nouns and adjectives. And we have first that a noun, this is just to uh, remember all the things that we have learned. Um, a noun is a word we use for a thing. So in this case, the noun uh, doesn't have like, all of that uh, rules that we are going to use with the other part of the speech. Nouns is one of the, um, the most important words that we have in English and even uh, in all of the languages because it's a very, very big group of words that we use in the spoken language. But in this case, the noun is just the subject of our sentences. But they don't have that um, structures, that rules. Um, they don't have to change um, like the verbs or the adjective of the adverb and all of the things. They are just to create. So nouns are people, places, and things. So we have that uh, nouns are, we can use it for a lot of things because we are going to talk about people, we are going to talk about places, and also we are going to talk about things. Some common people nouns are mother, father, sister, brother, man, woman, etc. All of the words that we can use to talk about people. And there are common nouns. Then we have some common place. Nouns are Ireland, Dublin, uh, the Central School, the United States, the name of the places. So we are going to talk about places. Then we have some common thing nouns that are pen, table, car, music, movie. The first letter of a place, a name or a person's name, is always a capital letter in the uh, sense that we are talking about proper nouns. In that case, we are going to use the capital letter. But if we are talking about common nouns, we are not going to use I'm so sorry, I'm having uh, troubles with the connection. Uh, here in it's kind of uh, complicated, but I am trying to use my um, the internet of my cell phone. So I think I hope that is enough to give the session. So if I have this kind of troubles, um, I want to say sorry because I am having this kind of uh, troubles and I don't know what it, what is happening. But we are going to try to um, complete the session. So I'm so sorry for that. It's okay. So we are going. Tell me. It's okay, teacher. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, of, of hard. We are going to try to do it. So uh, we were talking that uh, in the case that we are using that kind of uh, proper nouns. Uh, we are going to mark the difference using the uh, capital uh, letters. And with uh, the common nouns, we are going to use normal letters. So it says that the name of uh, a thing, it is not necessary to write the capital letter, but in the case that the, that name is at the beginning of the sentence, you know that we have that kind of rules. So for the adjectives, that is the part that we need to know. 
um, it says that the adjectives are words we use to describe nouns. And also we were uh, learning that yesterday that we use these adjectives to describe pronouns. So we are going to use both of them. The word table, we have the example, the word table is a noun. We have that the noun is a word that we use for things. So in that case, we have the example. The word table is a noun, but how do we describe the table? How can we give more information about that thing? So we are going to use adjectives and we can say, it is big, we have a big table. Uh, it's wooden, it's small or long. We use that kind of words and that is the main thing about the adjectives to help us to give more information about the things that we want to describe. So um, we have examples of adjectives, tall, beautiful, nice, interesting, and if we use an adjective in a sentence, we always put it in front of a noun. But in some cases, it is in, uh, next to the uh, noun. And we have that we need to put the adjective and then the noun, but you um, have learned that in some cases, it is not like that because we write the noun and then we write the adjective. So we have some examples in which we are going to use the adjective at the beginning. And it says a tall man, a nice lady, a beautiful sky. And we have, for example, John is a tall man. Anne is a nice lady. She looked up to the beautiful sky. So now we are going to enter the main topic that are the comparative adjectives. So we have that we have seen what an adjective is and what a noun is. Now we are going to look at comparing nouns. And for example, we have two countries. We have Ireland and we have Spain. That is the first example two countries. And in this case, we are using the name of places to um, give this example. There are nouns referring to places. And we have Ireland and Spain. So we have our examples. So the first one says that to compare the two countries, we can use comparative adjectives. And we have Spain is bigger than Ireland. Is bigger. In this case, we are using the adjective big than Ireland. So we have the first example. This one is the structure that we are going to use for the comparative one. Remember that we said that when we are writing comparative sentences using adjectives, we need to write the adjective plus then. Siempre que vayamos a escribir un, eh, una oración con un adjetivo, en modo comparativo, cuando estamos comparando dos cosas, vamos a poner nuestro adjetivo y vamos a escribir then. Siempre va a llevar eh, como esa, esa estructura, ¿verdad? A la hora de escribir las oraciones, porque estamos comparando entre dos cosas. Then, we have another one that is the same names. We have the structure here in which we have the adjective and then that are working together to make this comparison. So we have this example that are very um, simple, right? 
Then we form the comparative of adjectives with one syllable. Remember, with one syllable by adding the letters ER to an adjective. One syllable, just one syllable. And we have here one syllable. There are the short words that we are using to form these additives. One syllable by adding the letters. In this case, um, we are using ER. These ones. To the adjective. Right now, I don't need the mark. Okay. Mm. So we need to add that letters to the adjective to change that adjective. Sometimes we must uh, also double the final consonant of the adjective. In some cases, we need to double a uh, ready twice. So it says sometimes we must also double the final consonant of the adjective. And we have some examples, for example, and we have one that I have seen in the exercise and it says a B. We are going to double the last consonant and it changed to vigor. We do G's at the end. So it says when we make a sentence with uh, we need to put the word then after the comparative adjective, and we have some examples when we are using the uh, structure. So we are going to write some examples using comparative adjectives. And we have denial is longer. Uh, let's see. We are talking about rivers. And we have here the structure. Then it says, Bob is shorter than Pete. And we have here, I don't know why, but that have this one in capital letter. So shorter than, we have another one and it says, feet is taller than Bob. Feet is taller than Bob. A fiat is cheaper than a Mercedes. Mount Everest. is higher than Mount Blanc. Higher than, oh. Higher than 
Then we have an elephant. He is larger than a mouse. That a uh, mouse. I mean, done, 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 done. I'm changing the words. And the last one said, a mouse is smaller than an elephant. So in this case, we have that um, it's kind of easy to create this kind of sentences because we need two things that we are going to compare. We have um, some difference that we know about that things. And we need to use the adjectives. And we have a long list of words that we can use um, to use as an adjective. So in that case, we just need to know how to create that kind of a comparative or superlative uh, adjectives because you know that in this case we have this a uh, one syllable a uh, kind of adjectives then we have two syllables long words and uh, we have some rules for that kind of adjectives but if we can uh, remember all the information that we have about the adjectives it's kind of easy so in this case uh, you have to add ER at the end of the word, and also you can double G consonant because there are some rules that we need to follow. So it says that a comparative adjective is a word we use to compare nouns. When an adjective has one syllable, we form the comparative by adding ER. When we make a sentence, we use the word then after the comparative uh, adjective. So, in that case, it is not like we are going to uh, need a lot of things to create that kind of uh, sentences. Then, it says that we need to use also the word then. When we need, we are using this kind of um, sentence, you know that in that case, when you see the word then, you are making a comparative sentence using adjectives. And then we have the superlative. Now we are going to know what are the superlative uh, adjectives and how we can create sentence with that information. So we have superlative adjectives. And we have that when we have more than two nouns to compare, remember that we were talking about this yesterday. When we have more than two nouns to compare, we use superlative. So let's imagine we have three tables. We have three tables. The first table is big. The first table is big. Then the second table, um, the second table is, mm, we can say is smaller. And the third table is very, very small. So we have one big table one is small table and one is smaller table, really, really is small. So we can say when we are making a, this a, use of this kind of adjectives, we can say the third table is the smallest table. So in this case, we are not going to use the ER. We are going to use 
ESG. So in that case, we are saying that there is no other table that is smaller than that one. So the third table is the smallest table. And also we can say the first table is the biggest table. So in that case, when we are having this kind of superlative adjectives, it's not like we are going to make the comparison between two or three things. We are going to use one as the uh, first thing that we are going to say. Una diferencia bastante marcada entre los adjetivos eh, para hacer una comparación con lo de los superlativos es que en los comparison, eh, donde hacemos la comparación es entre dos cosas, simplemente. Y hacemos nuestra comparación y decimos, ah, él es más inteligente que, él es más alto que, él es más pequeño que. Pero en el superlativo tenemos dos o tres cosas que vamos a comparar y vamos a sacar cuál es el que supera a los demás. No es que vamos a hacer la comparación entre los tres y decir, es más pequeño que y más grande que, sino es el más. That is the main thing in the superlative. Él es el más, es el menos y es donde vamos a sacar que no hay nadie más que se compare a esa cosa o a esa persona en, en algunos casos. So we are going to write the example. That is the, the example of the tables. So we are going to write the example for these um, superlative adjectives. We have three tables. The first one, is big, the second table is smaller, and the, and the third table is very small. Okay. So we can say, we have two examples. Number one, the third table is the smallest table. Uh -huh. Smallest table. We have here our adjective is smallest. And we have the other one that we can say the first table is the biggest. Is the biggest table. Remember that you have to double. That kind, that kind of a uh, consonants. We need to double the consonants. So we have the two examples uh, when we are talking about the tables. So when an adjective has only one syllable, we form the superlative by adding est to the adjective. We also put the word that before the uh, superlative. So in this case, uh, when we have these one syllable adjectives, we add EST to the form of the adjective, and also we are going to use the. These are the two things that we need to keep in mind when we are using this kind of adjectives. And we have the examples. And we are going to use like the same example that we have in the first part to, I'm sorry, to make the comparison between the, uh, the way in which we are going to write the words. So we have, but I don't need this one. 
So we are going to write the same examples. And it says, the is the longest, the longest river in the world. Because there is no other river that is longer than this one. Number two, Joy has the shortest hair in the family. Short test here in the family. Then we have Manuel is the tallest person in the class. Mount Black is the highest mountain in Europe. The elephant is the largest land animal. We are not talking about that is the larger uh, animal among all of the kind of animal that we have in the world. We are talking about land. Estamos hablando de la tierra, ¿verdad? No del agua ni del aire. De la tierra nada más. The elephant is the largest. Land animal. Maria is the smallest person in the class. So in this case, we have some examples and I'm going to mark the superlative or the adjectives. So we have longest, then we have shortest. Tallest. Highest. Largest. And a smallest. So, now we are going to have examples with both. Vamos a utilizar unos ejemplos que tengan ambos tipos de adjetivos. Eh, los de, para hacer comparación y luego los superlativos. Así que lo vamos a combinar en un ejemplo. And we have the first one, because we need to see uh, how can we form this kind of sentence? So we have London is bigger than but Tokyo is the biggest city in the world. So we uh, start writing that one place is bigger than the other, but then we end telling that this one is the biggest and there are no other city larger than this one. Then we have John is taller then Mark, but Brian is the tallest in the family. 
this is like the example that I have at the beginning of this topic, uh, the image that we have at the beginning in which we are making comparison between two of these um, person that we have in the image. And then we are saying that uh, the third one is the biggest, or in this case, the tallest. In that case, we have the two kind of adjectives in the same sentence. So let's see. Um, we also have this kind of uh, structures that we are going to use um, to create this kind of sentences. So we need to know how to use that uh, structures to form sentence. After that, uh, we are going to make some uh, exercises. So we are going to see. Uh, let me take this. And I need to change this one. So here. So we know that uh, in this case, for the comparative adjectives, um, we have a formula and a specific formula for this one. So we are going to write the formula here. And it says, but I need to change something because you need to have that uh, space. We have comparative adjectives sentence formula. So we have here, we have first the noun, that is the subject, plus the verb, in this case, we are using the verb to be, right? Then we have the comparative adjective, then we have then, we have the noun, that is the object. So in this case, we have the first formula. Uh, when we are writing comparative adjective sentences. And we have some examples to use this formula. And we have the first one. And it says, my television that function as the noun or subject of the sentence plus the verb is plus the comparative adjective bigger plus then plus the noun or the object. And in this case is my computer. So we have the structure. My television is bigger than my computer. And in that case, we are uh, completing the structure for that kind of sentences. Then we have, um, we can create another kind of adjectives. For example, um, my mom, is funnier than my dad. So we have also the structure and we can add the plus between them to mark the spaces. And we have the sentence. In some cases, uh, the sentence will end after the comparative adjective and not include the object of comparison. This structure is possible when the context has provided enough information to make the comparison clear. So in some cases, when we are talking, we make the a context of the things that we are saying. So in that case, it is not necessary to add all the elements of the structure. So 
let's see how can we do something like that. And we have, in this case, uh, this kind of uh, sentence. And it says, my brother, oh my God, my brother is six feet tall, but my father is taller. So in this case, we are not going to add Dan, my brother. So, para este tipo de oraciones, no es necesario que agreguemos todos los elementos de nuevo. Eh, ya tenemos al principio que estamos hablando de una persona, en este caso, mi hermano. Es seis pies, ¿verdad? Se dice seis pies eh, de altura porque obviamente son... Eh, medidas diferentes a las que nosotros utilizamos acá. So, estamos diciendo la altura de esta persona, pero agregamos que mi padre es más alto que quién. Obviamente ya hablamos de mi hermano, entonces sabemos que estamos refiriéndonos a mi hermano. So, in that case, it is not necessary to add all the elements for the structure. But we need to give the context or the information uh, at the beginning, because if we um, try to make this kind of sentences, for example, imagine that we don't have this information. We are going to mark it with this one. So I'm not saying anything about my brother and I just said, but my father is taller. We don't know about the people that we are talking. We need to give the context for the sentences. So in that case, it is not necessary to complete the structure. Now, for the superlative adjectives. So we have the formula. And it says the noun, that is the subject, plus verb, plus the, plus superlative adjective, plus noun, that is the object. It's almost the same with the first one. So we have the example. And it says, my English professor, that is the noun or subject, plus the verb, in this case, B is plus the, plus the superlative adjective, smallest, and plus person. So we have all the elements of the formula or structure. My English professor is the smallest person. So just like comparative adjectives, the object of comparison can sometimes be left out as the same with the first um, thing that we have about the comparison. Also, we can create it in superlative when we have the context of the information that we are given. So we have another example and it says, we took an exam in class today. And I score the highest. So in this case, we don't have the object of this um, superlative sentence because I'm saying that, that we, who, who are we? The class, the complete class, my classmates. We took an exam in class today. That is the keyword. And I scored the highest. 
And in this case, in the class. So nobody has the same score as me. So it is not necessary to add the end of the structure. So in the case that we are creating comparative and superlative adjectives, we need to change an adjective into its comparative or superlative form depends on the number of syllables in the base form of the adjective. We have the one syllable adjective that is suffix er will be odd for the comparative adjective and est for the superlative adjectives. When the adjective has a single vowel between two consonants, that is consonant plus single vowel plus consonant, the, consonant, the second consonant will be double. That is the rule, remember this one. Cuando estábamos hablando que en algunos adjetivos se doblaba lo que es la consonante es cuando tenemos este tipo de palabras en las que tenemos una consonante. I mean, una, una vocal en medio de dos consonantes. Consonant, single vowel, and consonant. En ese tipo de palabras es donde vamos a doblar la consonante. For example, eh, we have this one. We have consonant plus single vowel plus consonant. That we are going to double the last one. And we have the example hot. This is a single um, one syllable adjective. Let me see. Ah, don't worry, don't worry. I have problems too. I understand. So. We have hot. This is a one syllable adjective. We are going to mark this one. One syllable adjective. And also it has this function, the consonant, the vowel, and the consonant. Now we need to do something like this. H, that is the consonant. The first one. Then we have O, that is the single vowel. And then we have T, that is a consonant. So we are like dividing the words. So in this case, we're going to double the T and we are going to create this one, hotter, hotter. And in the case that we're using the superlative, we are going to, uh, to have hard test. So we need to double. So we are going to create like um, table in which we are going to have some examples about this kind of adjectives. We are going to see uh, the form of the adjective, then the comparative, then the superlative. Vamos a ver las diferencias o cómo se ven estos, eh, estos adjetivos en una forma base, luego en comparativo y luego en superlativo. Cómo se ve la diferencia en la escritura. So we have three, one, two, three, four, five, six. And six. So we have here the adjective. Then we have comparative and superlative. So we have the first one, fast. Then we have cheap. Then we have fresh. Big. And sad. So for the comparative one, we need to write ER. Faster. And I'm going to divide this because I need to mark the ending. Then fast. Test. Then we have cheap, cheap, er. 
then this is just adding the endings of the words. Then we have fresh, the R, just bigger in this case, big. So in this case, I'm going to have this one, like this. Be guest. And the last one, sad, that is sadder. Again, in this case, we are going to double the last consonant, sadder. Sad, guest. So here we have the examples, like this. You have to write it like this in some cases. But in this case, it's just one syllable uh, sentence. We have two syllable sentence and also we have three syllable sentence. Then in that case, when we have a two syllable sentence and three syllable sentence in many cases, we are going to use more for comparative and must for superlative. So we are going to use more when the word is long and most for the superlative one. And also we have the irregular adjectives and we have some exemptions that we have in all of the topics that we have in English. So we are going to create the exercise because let me see, we have kind of uh, like five minutes to end the session for today. Vamos a hacer el primer ejercicio. It's like this one. Es como esta, um, esta tabla que tenemos acá. So in this case, I'm going to write the adjective and you will help me to create the superlative and the comparative one. So we have the exercise here. So let me see, I have a one, two, three. And I have 14, I guess. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. 15, here, because of the title. So I have the adjectives. Then I have the comparative and the superlative. So I'm going to write the list. Then you are going to say the form, uh, the comparative form and the superlative form of this adjective that I have in the table. So I have good, nice, dangerous, Expensive, bad, big, pretty, fast, happy, friendly, sad, Boring, angry, angry and funny. So here we have the adjectives. Now, for good, this is an irregular because it changed the form. For the uh, adjective good, what is the comparative form? Who knows? Better teacher. Yes, better. That's good. Better. And for the superlative part? The best. The best, good. The best. Now, nice. In this case, I will help you write in here 
the endings er and in this one est so nice comparative nicer aha uh -huh. nicer and superlative Nicest. Uh huh. Nicest. So, dangerous. This is a long one. Danger. We have what word? More dangerous. Uh huh. More dangerous. And for the superlative? Most dangerous. Most. So expensive, another long one. More expensive. Good, more expensive. More expensive. Good, good. And for the superlative? Most expensive. Mm -hmm. Good. Bad. It changed the form. Is it regular? Worse. Worse. Good, and for superlative? Worst. Worst, good. B, this is kind of easy. Comparative? Bigger. Bigger, Bigger. good. And superlative? Biggest. Good, pretty. Prettier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prettier. And superlative? Prettier. Good. Fast. Faster. Faster. Good. Faster. Superlative? Faster. Uh -huh. Fastest. Happy. Happier. Good, Happy. happier. Superlative? Yes. Happiest, happiest. Uh -huh, happiest. So in this one, let's see, let's see, let's see in this one. We have friendly in the comparative. How can we say a uh, friendly? Friendly. Ah, good. Friendliest. I mean, in this one is uh, er. So in this case, um, in some cases, we can make some mistakes using the word friendly as an adjective. Because in this case, uh, we are not going to use more and most. Because in that case, it is an adverb. But in, in adjective, when we are using as an adjective, is with this structure. So, for superlative. Friendliest. Good. Good, very good. Sad. Southern. Southern. Double D, last consonant, and superlative. Saddest. Good. Saddest. We have three more. Boring. Boring girl. Uh-uh. No. No. Boring. We are going to use Another word. More boring. Uh -huh. More boring. And superlative. And most, most boring. Good. Most boring. Angry. Angry. Good. Angrier. And superlative. 
angriest. Good. And the last one, funny. We have funnier. And the last, funnier. yes, good. And the last one, funniest. Funnier. That's good. Very, very good. So in that case, it is not complicated to understand this topic. So it's time to end the session because it's time. We are going to see each other tomorrow in the last session for this week. So have a good night and see you tomorrow with the last topic for this week. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow.